On September 23, 2010, the trial began for Stephen Haynes and Joshua Komisarjewski. If you don't know who these two men are, let me bring you up to speed. They're accused of allegedly on July 23, 2007, of approaching the home of Dr. Pettit, his wife, his two daughters, aged 17 and 11, at 3 a.m., where they broke down the door. They tied up Dr. Pettit. They took his wife and two kids upstairs where they tied them up. Stephen Haynes allegedly sexually assaulted Mrs. Haynes. And Joshua Komisarjewski allegedly sexually assaulted the 11-year-old. Sick bastard. They then waited for the bank to open where they took Mrs. Pettit to the bank where she withdrew $15,000. Somehow she was able to tip off the teller that there was something going on at the house. So when they got back to the house, these two men strangled and killed Mrs. Pettit. They then poured gasoline all over the house and around the two other daughters and lit the house on fire. Dr. Pettit was able to escape, but his, the rest of his family was not. At the trial, or at the beginning of the trial yesterday, it was shown that Mrs. Pettit was already dead before the house was lit on fire. But the two daughters, the 17-year-old and the 11-year-old, were still alive when these sick bastards... <laughs> started the house on fire. The 11-year-old was found at the top of the stairs. She had managed to get untied. She was found at the top of the stairs where she had died of smoke inhalation. The 17-year-old was still tied to the bed, and she supposedly had died of smoke inhalation, too, before she burned up. Now, at the trial, at the beginning of the trial here, there was revealed that these men had taken pictures with their cell phones of this stuff. There were pictures of Mrs. Pettit and the two dollars daughters tied up in their beds and partially clothed. There was text messages that were being exchanged between Hayes and Commissar Jevsky. And these two men were, according to these text messages, were thoroughly enjoying themselves while they tortured Dr. Pettit's wife and his two daughters, well, Dr. Pettit had to sit there downstairs tied up and listen to it. Now, Joshua Komisarjewski has got a very high-powered attorney who's got a reputation for getting, <laughs> getting some big people, their sentences reduced. I think these two should just have freaking public defenders that are fresh out of school, if you ask me. Now, at this trial, I don't think there is any doubt in anybody's mind that these men actually did it. I don't think that that is in question at all. And I shouldn't be laughing here because this is serious business. Um, the question is whether these guys should get the death penalty or life without parole. And I think either one of them is too good for them, to be totally honest with you. I mean, the death penalty... <laughs> It's just that when you do something like that is is the easy way out because their death is going to be painless, not this tortured death that they inflicted upon Dr. Pettit's wife and his two daughters. So what do you guys think? I, I personally think in cases like this. That, no, the death penalty is too good. I agree, life without parole. However, I think these two men should be tortured, just like their victims were, every day for the rest of their lives. They should be put under close observation so they cannot commit suicide. And they should be tortured. Every day for the rest of their lives. What do you think?
Here's what I think. I think they should take each one of these guys and nail their scrotum to a 2x4, pour some gasoline on said 2x4, and then light it on fire. Then, hand each one of them a very dull knife and tell them, you got a choice to be made. <laughs>